Microservices is the first concept in Mac architecture. It's the M in Mac. And in the tech community, there's a big debate about what exactly a microservice is and what you can truly call a microservice. For instance, microservices architecture is a way of building systems from small, independently deployable and scalable services. So today I'm going to avoid the debate on what a microservice definition is and focus on the problems they solve and why you need to care about them. So let's waste no more time, let's get to it. So the first area we're going to talk about is that of modularization of code. And that's when you take a system and you break it up into smaller units of development. To understand how microservices are different to the way we used to develop code, I'm going to talk about two concepts, and that's loose coupling and tight coupling. A good example of a tightly coupled system is a mobile phone. If you want to charge the battery in a mobile phone, you have to plug the whole phone into a charger. If you wanted to replace the camera, if you wanted a better processor or a better screen, you'd actually have to replace the phone with a new phone with those components in because they're so tightly coupled together. And in some ways, this is very similar to software. So previously, we would build applications from blocks of code and libraries. And to build an application, what you'd have to do is take the interfaces of each of these blocks, each of these libraries, and glue them together with another layer of code. So if you wanted to make changes or add new features, you'd have to start pulling the blocks apart from the application and reinserting them and re-gluing them together. And this is because you start to create dependencies between the blocks because of the glue code. In fact, the whole application starts to build dependencies across its entire architecture. And this type of development where you're fusing the blocks together creates tight coupling. So with tightly coupled development, it becomes slower and less agile. Microservices replace software components and libraries with services which are independent and loosely coupled. And you can think of Lego bricks as very loosely coupled because you can assemble them into lots of different structures without creating any real dependencies on the bricks themselves. And microservices connect together using an API web service and this gives you a common standard so you can connect them together to build a larger application. So connecting components in this way creates very very few dependencies, hence the components are loosely coupled. So the next area that microservices addresses is that of decentralization of data. Previously, when you architected big applications and systems, data would be centralized into a large structured database. These large structured databases were designed to support all the data-driven components in your system. This way of centralizing data also created tight coupling between the different data structures. And one of the problems of that is some data structures, for instance, customer data, may have very different views or requirements depending on the context in which they're used in the system. For example, the view for a customer looking at their personal data is very different to the view of a support operative looking at a customer record. And if you have to make changes to a centralized data model to reflect these different views, you have to do a lot of testing to make sure you don't break different parts of the system. Often changes made in a centralized database can lead to risky large-scale migration processes due to the widespread nature of those changes. And microservices have a different approach. Microservices prefer to manage their own data. So this means you can design data structures specifically for that microservice without creating dependencies on other areas of the system. So this has the advantage of allowing you to choose the best database for the job. For instance, a high throughput content service may use a NoSQL database. Yeah, if you're building something around social networking, perhaps a graph-based database may be better instead. However, with this approach, you do need to consider how to keep data consistent across all of these microservices. Another important area that microservices improve is that of deployment. And at first you'd think that having lots and lots of small services would actually create a management overhead. However, the benefit of a microservice is that it's very easy to automate its deployment. And teams that develop microservices tend to use continuous integration and continuous development and automate as much as the deployment as possible through infrastructure as code. And being loosely coupled means that smaller changes and iterations can be made super quick making microservice development much more agile. The thing I really love about microservices is that they are business oriented. When you design an application with microservices, you split it up in terms of its business capabilities. 
So each microservice actually takes hold of a business capability, such as an API for managing a basket. So splitting up the system in this way allows you to focus the development on adding business value. It also means all that agility you get from using microservices is geared towards agility in the business itself. That all sounds great, but why should you care? And what are the benefits of really using microservices? The first most obvious one is that of agility, which we just talked about. Another big benefit of microservices is that because they're loosely coupled, you can get a lot of reuse across many different applications. And what developers love about developing microservices is it gives them the freedom to choose the technology they want to use. Microservices are independently scalable, which means you can scale the services that are getting the traffic. It means that your scaling is much more targeted than just scaling an entire application as you had to do with the monolith. The fact that microservices are independently releasable means you can be much more reactive to change. Building systems from microservices can make them much more fault tolerant as an outage from a small service has much less impact. Another big benefit of microservices is that you don't have to build them all yourself. You can choose to buy business capability and then plug them into the rest of the architecture. If you want to gain a deeper understanding of microservices and understand how they work in modern day e-commerce, I'd recommend the book by Kelly Gooch. I'll leave the link in the description for you. If you're interested in knowing more about Mac architecture, I'd recommend watching the other videos on the concepts. So why not watch the video on the next concept, what is API first? It explains why API first is so important and how it differs from microservices and headless. But now it's time for me to say thank you, Goodbye, and I'll see you next time.